In this video, I'll be exploring which configuration of engines will be the most efficient for various kinds of vehicles that need to hover. Applications of this can include anything from drones to jump jets and anything in between. Today, however, I'll be using a theoretical benchmark, which gives some constraints and something to measure. I'll also use an imaginary device that has a combined weight of 100 kilograms, which has to at least be able to hover. This means that there should be a minimum of 980 newtons of thrust in total. In terms of configurations, I'll be testing two options, having one big engine that splits the thrust into four separate outlets at each corner, or directly having four smaller high thrust to weight ratio lift bands that bypasses the air channels entirely. The inlet will be four square meters and the outlets will have an area of one square meter each as a control to see if there's any difference in efficiency. I will also vary the area of the inlet and outlet to see what effect having it have been tree type of duct walls will have in performance. Before we get into the maths and do this theoretical experiment, we should take a look at what history has to tell us about the possible outcome. The Harrier aircraft, which was the first jump jet to fly in the 60s, has similarities to this experiment. As part of its vertical takeoff and landing capabilities, it has two nozzles on each side that direct the thrust from the Pegasus engine towards the ground. This design was revolutionary at the time, but it did have some drawbacks. Due to the configuration of the nozzles, the aircraft wasn't very controllable, making it difficult to land. Usually the plane had to drop quickly, which caused its own problems on the landing gear, otherwise it will cause too much turbulence and instability, which in one occasion caused an aircraft to flip over, killing its pilot. Today's F-35B is a jump jet that made many improvements over its predecessors, which includes two turbines for hovering and having its nozzle spread out over a larger area to increase stability. This is where my investigation stems from. Would it be better to have some smaller engines or one larger one for VTOL aircraft from a mathematical standpoint? Equations that will be used include flow continuity at a junction to determine how airflow will behave when separating in the pipes, and mass flow rate because there is a relation between force, which is needed for thrust and fluid continuity. These can be rearranged to give the velocity using force and area, and density is 1.225 kilograms on meters cubed at sea level. For our minimum thrust of 980 newtons, or 245 newtons for each corner, I set up this equation, which can be simplified to F equals 3920 over the inlet area. This stems from the outlets being one square meter and the inlet being some variable area. If I switch it to having the inlet be four square meters to maintain the same ratio and the outlets be a variable area, the equation for this is F equals 980 times the outlet area. From the resulting plots, you can see a clear difference between varying the inlet area or the outlet area. But you may ask, what does this all mean? Ideally, you would select an area on the x-axis that results the least thrust that has to be produced by the inlet, as on the y-axis. The least thrust is ideal because you wouldn't want the main engine to produce many thousands of newtons of thrust, only for the outlets combined to produce the 980 newtons required. That's really inefficient. When determining what area is best for both scenarios, we should take values below 980 newtons, as shown by the green line. If we look at the graph with the variable in the area, which is the blue line, good areas are anything above 4 square meters. For the graph with the variable outlet area, which is the orange line, good areas are below 1 square meter. The next step is to calculate the power of the lift fans with this formula, and lift efficiency with this formula. With the larger the value, the better, assuming a rotor efficiency of 0.3, and a sigma value of 1 with this formula, because we're using ducted fans. In the 4 square meter in that 1 square meter outlet setup, there was mathematically no difference between having one large fan or four smaller fans, so I had to lower the thrust required at the inlet by varying the areas. I chose having a 6 square meter inlet from the first graph and 0.5 square meter outlets from the second graph to see what changed and applied the equations. I found that it costs less power to produce the 980 newtons of thrust by increasing the pressure at the outlets. So to answer the question of which setup is the best, I can say that it depends. If your aircraft can support having a few pipes, then one big lift fan is your answer. Otherwise, having four smaller fans could be better. 